interesting. So maybe that's what we're going to talk about is what, you know, like we're all in the sort of those winter doldrums. So um, what do we expect over the next while? Hi, Jax. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. You guys, you got a lot of snow, didn't you, recently? We did. <laughs> We got some, but not a not a lot, a lot. Um, my son, my son in law works in construction, so yesterday they were told that um, for the company they had to go and clear the snow off of a bank, off of the roof of a bank. It took them oh. all day to do it, a whole crew. Oh no, that's not oh, good. Yeah. So that's not good. Yeah, we got some, oh, but it's freezing here. Yeah, well, it's minus it's minus eighteen here right now, so that makes it what zero Fahrenheit. So it's it's cold, but it's not miserable. Yeah. I was I was down at the pool today, and I was talking to this uh, older gentleman, and we were we were just reminiscing what it was like growing up as kids. You know, we grew up in the country. Um, we spent most of our time outdoors. <laughs> you know. Walk to school, stay out, you know, send us outside at recess, walking home, and then we play. And so we were good with the cold. We knew how to, we knew how to handle it. Hot darn it. So two, here. You're in Winnipeg? What? Yeah. Okay, so it said Winnipeg is negative 17. No, wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Yeah, negative 17? Uh, yeah, well, okay, so mine, yeah, negative 18 Celsius, yeah. Oh, my God. So you're, like, right up there with Helsinki. And yeah. what, what's the temperature where you are, Jax? It's uh, minus 10, but feels like it's uh, minus 16. I mean, it's really cold here. It's 24. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you poor thing, you. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, and stuff. So that that translates. I, 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 I'm crying, I'm crying cocktail oil tears for you. <laughs> that translates to 75 here, one degree in Winnipeg. Yeah, but 75 here. Yeah, Cocoa Beach is 73. Helsinki oh two degrees. New York is 31 and snowing. Um, Orlando, Orlando's just been raining every day since I got back from Egypt. And um, really, just in case you don't know, we actually are recording. But here's here's my dress. Ooh, I love it. Nice. Ooh. Yeah, beautiful. Ooh. It covers the ground. Get back into the camera. Yeah. Very nice. So today, today I'm like a DJ using my son's headset in his room. So I'm like chicka chicka. Um, on the news today, Tyler and Aaron's channel got kicked off of YouTube. I saw that. I saw that. I was talking to James this morning. He said that for his channel, he put up a disclaimer that says this is for entertainment purposes only. So uh, for us, we don't delve too deeply into that. I mean, I don't have any strikes for that type of stuff. A um, typical skeptic got, um, has a strike. He's off for like a week or two. So he's ooh. on Rumble. Yeah, yeah they're, they're ready to shut it away. down. They're ready to shut people down now. And uh, there was a message in the CW that, let's see. Let's go back to that. Uh, Aaron put out, or Tyler put out a message and said, don't worry, because um, they got Rumble, Patreon. We're also on BitChute, Odyssey, and Apple Podcasts. So, bam, you're going to have to move forward. And at some point, I mean, we're all going to have to move forward. At this point, I'm building my website, and I'm thinking, like, what I want is going to be embedded in my website. And eventually, you know, the people who know you will find you and the people who need you will find you where you're at, you know? So true. Yeah. Yeah. So today, Terry, you said we were going to talk about some a beautiful mess because 
I don't know. I thought I was going to have an idea of what we wanted to talk about. I know this weekend we'll be interviewing Pixie and she'll be talking about her life with high controlling religious families. Uh, I think the name of the church is not her church, but it, it was that she was being homeschooled. And when we think homeschool, we just think, oh, I know for me personally, I didn't think there was that was a derogatory statement, but you would see people be like, oh, that person's homeschool. And you you were like, what is the derogatory meaning behind that? Right. What 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 could be, you know, especially as a parent, you think you kind of want your kids to be homeschooled because school these days is uh, basically like some type of terrorist game that you play with your kids that you you risk actually losing custody or your kids being bullied or just being indoctrinated in some way. But these um, fundamentalist Christian type movement is to a different extreme, you know, where you got your turtleneck all the way up to here. And, you know, they actually look down on a lot of people and there's a lot of abuse involved in some of the Christian fundamental families, which we got to see by watching um, Shiny Happy People, which was really enlightening to me. Like, oh, this is what they mean by homeschooled. <laughs> so we'll get to talk to uh, Pixie this weekend and we'll do live on YouTube and talk about how that affected her clothing, um, freedom, haircuts. I mean, I mean, just how controlling they were that everybody focuses, like they, they move together like a mob in a way, like something doesn't happen unless we're all doing what father says we're doing. And even now as an adult, at a, an adult age, far over 20, nearly 30, that still having to push back with dealing with a family that's dominating in all the areas of her life, but trying to fight for that freedom and independence and sovereignty with this strong church background that, you know, that doesn't allow her the freedom and just how to deconstruct all the limitations. When I'm going to say that these type of situations create lots of self-limiting beliefs and doubt in yourself, scrutiny, low self-esteem, so many issues coming from this that they actually have a process to deconstruct these beliefs. And a lot of people are coming from this where they say they think that they actually hate God or they think that they actually hate what God is about, but is it because we've learned incorrectly what God is based on the opinions of these groups to get together and take a book and manipulate it? One of the books that I was reading lately was Truth Versus Lies. I believe that's the name of it, isn't it, Jax? It's true, girl. I sent it to you. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Oh, Truth Versus Falsehood with Dr. That's Dr. David Hawkins. It was so funny. I was in the thrift store and I was going through the thrift store, two different thrift stores looking at books. And then the name Hawkins kept coming up, coming up, but it was Stephen Hawkins. And then I, I was like, I'm going to finish this book. And it was David Hawkins. And I was like, oh, wow, that, that was kind of a coincidence, a synchronicity that I kept finding these Hawkins books. Um, but it is, you know, spiritual false well the art of spiritual discernment so it's truth versus falsehood and uh and he actually hits on a lot of these things that we learn you know once you give someone power and a book all it takes is a book for some reason if it's written in a book so anybody can write a book but if it's written in a book boy oh boy that it, it must be true and that includes medical textbooks so um, anyway, that's what we'll be doing on Saturday. Words are powerful. 
Written words are powerful. Yeah. 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 A lot of people think what they read in a book is true just because it's in a book. But, you know, if I, I can find a book that says Hondas are garbage and then I can find books that say Hondas are the best. So it is your discernment. You know, how much you eat and how much you swallow, that's going to be up to you. So, Terry, you decided to do a card draw with the map deck. And I I did. So it's from the map deck. <laughs> and and it, it was, we were saying, well, what are we going to be talking about? And so I went to the cards and I went to the map. That's what I was inspired for. And I threw, drew three cards. The first one was on 27. The second one was 14, Ride the Wave. And the third one was the Dry Desert. So my question, what I asked was, okay, what do we really need to know for the next, you know, six weeks or so? We're, we're in the doldrums of that winter, you know, after Christmas, in between winter and spring and, and stuff. And we're settled in and we're just all kind of looking at what is the direction we, what is, what's happening in our lives, you know, like where and what do we need to be focusing on? So that's what I asked sort of from the deck. And so the first card that I selected was 27 home. So um, this one, what it says to me is that we have to focus on ourselves. And so our home is our physical body. Our home is our surroundings. So it's asking that we take the time to um, just reflect and, and be home and be comfortable with ourselves. And so that may mean that we have to do some cleaning in our home. Or maybe it means that we have to do some detoxing with our body or start eating healthy but we're to focus on our home and on our being whether like i said whether it's our physical body whether it's our physical surroundings but it's important for us to to spend that time because there's going to be lots of stuff that's going on so um you know we're going to need to ride the wave of this and so as we start to hear about things happening and, and we can be really concerned about all the stuff that's happening around us, but if we can bring ourselves back into our self, into our being, then we're going to be able to ride that wave. And, and that's why the home is so important because that's what grounds us. That's what gets us back into like, okay, this is, this is who I am and this is my, this is my a goal for the next while is just to become more comfortable with, with myself and with my being. And, you know, all the stuff that's going to happen around us is going to happen, but we have to be comfortable with being able to ride that wave and to succeed in it. And, and sometimes it's going to feel like it's a dry desert, you know, like are there um, things that are happening and, and we feel like things aren't happening enough, but you have to remember that within the desert, there's a lot of life in there. It may seem like it's dry, but underneath there's things that are sprouting, things that are growing. There's, there's all kinds of life. So what we don't see at the surface, underneath the surface, there's a lot going on. So we have to remember that, that um, we have planted the seeds and that we are getting ready to to um, expand. And so sometimes we have to go through that. And, and it's funny because we're in that winter state. And what is that winter? That winter, winter is that time of hibernation and it's the time of the energies gathering so that they can spring forward. So I think for the next you know, for the next few weeks, you know, till till we get through the these this time of winter, um, there's a focus on ourselves, on on our being, and our ability to ride whatever is going to take because that's how we gather our energies and we're 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 getting ready to to open up. And then I picked another card from. Um, the gateway, um, the gateway cards, just to sort of like as an as an as an over as an overlay, and the card that came up was cultivating prosperity. The abundance of the universe is pouring into my life. 
So it's there, it's, it's underneath the surface, it's underneath the surface of that dry desert, right? The, the dry desert is, is, under, is, is there, but this is, this is what that overwhelming um, overseeing card is, is that we're going to cultivate that. And, and you know, we think about prosperity as, um, as uh, financial, but there's also prosperity in our, our way of being, our thoughts, our relationships. Um, so it's more than just, you know, it could certainly be a, a, a monetary, but there's a lot of other prosperities that, um, that come into play here. So I, I think that just generally over the next while is, is like get to know and, and get to ground yourself in, in your being. And that means you're being in yourself and your home and you'll be able to ride the waves and know that, that the times are coming with that, that things are going to, you are going to um, be able to reap what you're sowing. Um, that's my, that's my take on it. I don't know. Erica, do you got anything you I, want I to used say? the, uh, when I was at home, they had this thing called the Clarence update. So it's just, um, it's the Terry update. <laughs> <laughs> this is the news, the news and the weather. This is what's going on. Um, you know, it's so okay. interesting that, yeah. that the first car, it had to do with home because it seems like even when I was away on vacation, I was thinking, I, when I get home, I want to do this. And when I get home, I want to paint. I want to um, get me a new couch. And I want, you know, like I would just think that things I wanted to fix up and organize and change kind of like that spring cleaning. And it was immediately like I was dusting off shelves and moving things around and seeing what I don't need anymore. It's, it's that's how I felt. I just felt like even though I was having a good time, I was ready to come home so I could see what I can do in my home. And uh, yeah, it was, it was cool. And uh, we talked last week and we talked about this feeling of being in the void and that just how it feels sometimes, right? Like like when you have a bamboo plant, you've done all this work and you planted a seed and you watered it every day, but there's some bamboo that won't break the ground for five years. Like for five years, it'll have this little tiny plant. And then after that, it'll shoot up six and 20 feet, but all the growth is done underneath. So it looks like nothing's going on, but then all of a sudden, pow. And so many readings I'm seeing now are basically, this is it. You've done the work. This is the time. And so I even looked at the Rose Oracle deck while you were doing your thing. Okay. And yeah. I was like, well, that would be something comforting while you're in this desert. Here's the comfort. And the card says potential. Oh, let me see. I almost hit focus, 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 focus. Ah, potential the bud. promise. It's about to happen. Keep going. Nice little yeah. picture. I've been focusing on the color pink a lot too. Like I wanted to go visit my sister in New York because I was like, you know what? I went all the way around the world. Now I need to go see my sister. And um, oh my gosh, let me get this pink tower. This is even a pink tower above me. But my focus has mm. been just on pink. I don't know why colors don't. <laughs> Let me block some of the light. You can't see how good the color is. But um Oh beautiful. Pink I was quartz. thinking, even my sister's favorite color is pink. And uh I was thinking, wow, what if we go find a hotel, like a just a really nice hotel to go to? Ah, look at you. We should go. Cheers. Um, <laughs> we're goofy, but it's for the ladies. Anyway, um, uh, <laughs> but I was like, we should find a really nice pink hotel room and just luxuriate, you know, like just be in the pink. And it's so funny too, because I, I just looked up something this morning about the color pink versus the color brown. Because, you know, most of our furniture is brown or black composite stuff and and then for me my walls are mostly beige but it 
this it needs to stop. <laughs> I need to add some color therapy well, all throughout my life. And so pink, when I look up, is of course the heart chakra, right? Right. So when I looked up pink versus all this brown that's in my house, it, it says it sounds like a wonderful folk. Oh, wait a minute, that's a whole different story. Okay, so pinks are soft and often associated with the feelings of calmness, sweetness, femininity. They can be a soothing, comforting effort, effect on the mood, promoting relaxation and a sense of tranquility. Pink is also associated with love, compassion, and nurturing. Even though brown is a warm earth tone and it represents stability and reliability and a sense of grounding, that seems very utilitarian you know, and its purpose, it's like it serves a purpose and it's grounding and it, it connects you to nature, you know, but, you know, sometimes when you get too much sun, you get blisters, right? Sometimes if you walk a, a long time with no shoes, you can, you know, you step on a rock. And so we're stepping on some rocks and we're getting a couple of blisters and it feels a little bit dry out in the desert. And like now it's just Give yourself a little hug. You did a big job last year and, and you got a lot on your plate for this year, but give yourself a big hug and soothe yourself. Go back to the lavenders and the pinks and the green and welcome in some healing and some love and some comforting and some self-compassion because maybe you didn't finish everything on your checklist, but you're not a loser. Spirituality is not a job. It is just your life. You know what I mean? And uh, that was another thing that I really liked about the book. He said, let your prayer be your life. It's it, this isn't spirituality isn't a thing that you do. It's a thing that you are. Like if you ask a cat and you say, this is what a cat is. The cat is just going to be, he's going to be like, no, that's not me. I'm just me. Just be this thing that you are. And, uh, so, you know, looking to the left and looking to the right. You can look at other people, how they express their spirituality, but how do you express it? And it, it's not this thing that you wake up on a checklist to be spiritual. It is you breathing in and out and enjoying your life and anchoring in this joy, finding this joy with the life that we have in front of us. Sometimes we lead our lives too much by a list. We have to do this. We have to do that. And that's not what life is about. It, life is about about being in the present moment. And so maybe being in the present moment isn't about doing all of that other stuff that we have a checklist to do. Maybe being in the present moment is just sitting and breathing and taking in the beauty of, you know, a bouquet of flowers or just letting your mind drift into um, something that is using your imagination because the imagination is your direct connection with the creative source. That's what our right. imagination is. Anything, anything that there is, um, is imagined by the creator. So uh, when we use our imagination, we're, we're having that conversation with the creator and we don't really think about it. And so uh, we don't think about it that way, but the imagination is directly related to the creator. Right. And here's that balance. I got that right hand, divine masculine checklist, get it done. Go, 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 go. And then I got to balance that with that left hand, divine feminine. I need to receive pleasure. I need to receive joy. I need to receive comfort and love. And so I do have things that I need to get done, but I also need to balance between how do I, how do I feel better, which doesn't mean being triggered and, and looking outward for other people to not trigger you. It's how do you comfort yourself? How do you self, um, how do you self resource mm -hmm. without pulling from everyone and everything around you? How do you self resource? How do you give yourself what you need to make it through the days, the hours, the weeks? And move that 10 seconds at a time sometimes, right? Now is now, mm -hmm. and, and now is now, and now is now, and now is now. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and, and you know what? And it's like um, we're never stuck. We are moving. 
that everything is always moving. It's just that we may need to sort of take a, um, a break from all of the busyness and, you know, like you have to get back into it. Um, I'm not saying that's, that's what you, you, you stay, but sometimes we, we live just too much with, I got to do this. I got to do that. And that's coming from the ego mind, right? Because the ego is telling us that in order for you to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, valuable, you have to do all of these things. And, and that's not true. Just being here and experiencing this is, 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 um, yeah, just waking up in the morning and saying good morning <laughs> to yourself. You know, like those are important things to do. And so finding that home and finding ourselves comfortable in our home, that's important. Whether it's our, like I said, the physical body or, or, or our surroundings. So yeah, maybe we have to add some pink to our, to our surroundings. Maybe we go and buy a dozen roses for ourselves just because I want to. I do it. I love it. So unless um, our extra person or our other attendee has two cents they want to add to the recording. No, thank you. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to shut this baby down and welcome to 2024 and we look so forward to the changes coming up. Uh, Journey to the Truth has a conference in May in Grafton, Illinois from the 13th to the 20th uh, and I believe that's those are the right dates. I'm looking forward to doing some around town stuff and seeing the ladies and gentlemen that I saw last year, they were so awesome. And then James right now, he's down here looking for a hotel for his conference. So you can look forward to that in July. Uh, I keep forgetting what the special day is that he's planning it for, uh, but I'll remember. Um, but when we get a hold of the actual link, then we'll share it and look forward to Saturday uh, discussing Shiny happy people, which hey, let me go ahead and share the screen. So on Saturday, we look forward to talking about the shiny happy people that weren't so shiny and happy. This daughter, her father was getting fifty thousand per episode, and she was on welfare to be on that show. It was amazing. Um, and then if you get time, a great book to check out is. Okay, Truth Versus Falsehood. This was an amazing book. I think I finished it all in one day as if I did all the hard I, was, I, got, I, I have no choice. But um, these were great. And I'm trying to get back on to here. Okay. <laughs> ah. This was great. Anything else, Terry? I'm, I think we I have to say I hate these phone calls that come in from nowhere oh. that we don't know. <laughs> the rose, yes, that's a great, that's a lovely oracle by, by uh, yeah, Rebecca. it is. Yeah. Okay, we're shutting it down. Okay. But let me hit the button, Terry, because I, you know, you guys know I'm gonna fumble around for like um 30 seconds and figure this out, right? <laughs>